Yay. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Grace. The Lord of the dance. Lord of the dance. Good morning. Welcome to Bay Lake United Methodist Church. Um, I'd love to welcome all those worshiping in person and those who may be worshiping in line because God is good all the time. God healed my COVID. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> it, it's a little different from the first time I got COVID. First time, a little cough, nothing, no, you know. This time is a little more, and then I started getting negative test results back on Wednesday, but it's still like a little tired, a little, and everybody says, well, it just kind of hangs in a little longer the, the second time you get it. So, but thank you, Lord, and thanks to Gary Shaw for stepping in at the last minute. Hey, my Wednesdays and Thursdays are like, okay, did I get through Wednesday, get through Thursday? I didn't get COVID from Sunday. Well, this Thursday, I go, Runny nose, I go, oh, no. And sure enough, I test I'm positive. But, but thank you, Lord, for healing. Oh, thank you, Lord, for healing. So I appreciate that. And thanks to Gary for, for stepping in at the last moment. So it's wonderful to be back with you in person again. So thank you, Lord, for that. So I have a question for you. A question, a thought, a suggestion, something like that. Every day we make thousands of? Yes. Y'all went to the first service, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> we do. We make thousands of decisions, and some of them left, right, straight, you know, inconsequential, and you get to work, and you go, I don't remember driving to work, you know, <laughs> you know, it's something you do every day, but we make decisions all the time, and uh, I want you to be thinking about those decisions that are minor, which are not a big deal, but think about maybe some of those bigger decisions that you made. What went into your decision? You know, did you do a lot of research? Did you ask a lot of people? Think about, especially those bigger decisions, how did you make that decision? Because the day scripture is talking about four disciples making a huge decision to leave everything and follow Jesus. So think about that, and we'll dig a little deeper on that as we move into our sermon. And I'll ask Lynn to come forward. We're going to do a new song. It's out of the faith we sing, but I think the tune you'll recognize and the words are awesome. It's one of my favorite songs called The, Sum the Summons. Stand as you're able.
Amen, amen. Please be seated. In preparation for celebrating Holy Communion after the sermon today, uh, I'll invite you to join me as we celebrate together the invitation, the confession, and pardon assurance. It's on page 12 in the hymnals or on the screens in front of you. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. So therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I'll invite you to pray in silence for a few moments. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Our scripture today comes from the Gospel of Mark, the first chapter, verses 14 through 20. Uh, I'll invite you to assume a posture of worship. If you're comfortable standing, I invite you to stand. It is warmer if you stand instead of being seated, just to let you know. And they've been working on the heat for three days now. We still haven't seemed to get it quite right. So I beg your, uh, <laughs> that situation. Please join me as we read a scripture. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And he went a little farther. He saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Please be seated, and I'll invite the children to come forward for children's time. Come on down. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody this morning? Everybody doing pretty good? Yay. Oh, I don't know. You have to wait for a moment. I'll share you in a second. How about that? So we were talking about decisions. Decisions is choosing what? Between this or that, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> this or that, right, Jocelyn? Yes, oh this or that. It could choose to go forward. It could choose to go backwards, right? So if my mom says, all right, Dennis, don't eat any cookies before dinner because it will spoil your appetite. Have you ever heard that before? So then I have a decision to make, don't I? Never, <laughs> never happened to your dad. So I either choose to follow my mom or I do what? I choose to, <gasps> no, I'm sure y'all wouldn't do that, right? But it's a decision you make, right? Because God gave us the power to choose, right? So if I had an option, I could choose <gasps> M&M's or I could choose pretzels. Oh, pretzels. pretzels. Which, which one's healthier? Pretzels. pretzels are healthy, right? But... M&M's taste better, don't they? So maybe I could choose my pretzels for dinner and my M&M's for dessert. That would be cool, wouldn't it? Yeah. 
For popcorn. Oh, I have not. I love popcorn, but I have never had M&Ms with popcorn. So guess what? If somebody does something, if, if somebody does something not nice to me, can I choose to still be nice to them? Yes. You can, can't you? No, what does Jesus want us to do? Be nice to one us. She says, that's just so simple. Y'all just make this simple. Y'all are so, so smart. So we're using our power to choose. God gave us each a power to choose, to choose being nice to people, choosing to, choosing to behave in church. Oh, did I, did I say that? No, I didn't. And I choose to laughter because laughter is always fun, isn't it? All right. Can we put our hands together? And we're learning, trying to learn the Lord's Prayer. Let's be nice. Let's Lord's Prayer. And the congregation is going to help us. You ready? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We can join Miss Lynn and Miss Jackie for Children's Church, or you can go back to your parents, whichever you desire. Oh, and James Bennett will be there too, won't he? Yes, he will. And if you've got to, you can come back down.
Amen, amen. Thank you, choir. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Grace. As we move into a time of being in prayer with God and one another, you're always invited and welcome to come to the altar rail, to kneel, to stand uh, during our, our time of prayer. Uh, we're so thankful for your continued support of our ministries at Bay Lake United Methodist Church. Uh, without your helpful support, we couldn't continue to be the hands and feet to share God's love in the world. So thank you for that. There is an offering plate at the rear of the sanctuary for those worshiping in person. And for those worshiping online, uh, there are links on our website to support our ministries. We do thank you so much for that support. And as we uh, go to God, we go to God as we think about the vows we, we say as we a vow, a vow we give, a vow we give, a vow we give when we join United Methodist Church, that we do come to God with our prayers, our presence, our gifts our service, and our witness. Let us be in prayer together. Let us pray. Lord, we do thank you for this day and the gift that this day brings. Another opportunity to say yes to you, Lord. To say yes to your unconditional love. To say yes to your call on our lives. To say yes to that adventure called life where there are, there are joys, there are sorrows, there's ups, there's downs. Uh, it's just amazing, Lord, as we seek to follow you seek to receive your love, that we can love you, Lord, that we can love other people, that we can love ourselves, uh, that there is a, a need for each and every one of us in your amazing plan, Lord. We each have spiritual gifts and graces and talents and experiences that are unique to us, and each of us play a part in your amazing plan, Lord. We just thank you for the opportunity to be a part of this amazing world, of this amazing thing you are doing that started so many years ago with Jesus coming to earth fully human, fully divine, out of your love for each and every one of us. Lord, we do come thankful for all the blessings we receive. And at the same time, we lift up all those who may not have food, shelter, clothing, some of the basic necessities that we often forget and take for granted. We do lift up those people who are in need that way throughout the world. And Lord, as always, we pray for peace, peace in Ukraine, peace in the Middle East. We know, Lord, that we have the power to choose, that we can make decisions. And we just pray that those decisions are made on love, on seeking a way forward for peace, that you would guide each of our leaders here in our country and countries around the world. Help them make those decisions that will bring us together, not push us apart, that will lift us all up, not tear down. We do pray for that peace, Lord, that we are so in need of at this, in our world this time. We pray for all those people who have lost loved ones, whether it's from war and violence, from sickness and illness, Lord. We know that if they have professed their faith in your son Jesus as their Lord and Savior, that they're with you in heaven, Lord. And we pray that all people would come to know of you and have that relationship. But we pray comfort for those families who are grieving their physical loss. Just give them your peace, Lord, your peace that is... Uh, eternal, Lord. And Lord, we do lift up some specific prayer requests from our church family this morning. We would pray for Madison and Karen Montgomery, for Dottie Jacks, for Bill Waller, for Gretchen and Bob Scholar, for Bob Reavy, for Kay Spaulding, for Becky Daniels, for Zoe Scaduto, for the Gray family and all those who are continuing to recover from the tornado damage, Nancy Pelton, and Bob, Barn, uh, Bob Edmonds as well, Lord. Lift up John Barnes, Maddie Long, Bill Stevensman, and also the, the family of uh, Tarjay, an eight-year-old girl uh, that's a good friend of Virginia Hoffman who passed away, Lord, after a battle with cancer. And lift up Sherry Harrington too, Lord, for continued prayers for her eyes. And now, Lord, we take a moment to lift up those other prayer requests either to, to you, either out loud or to ourselves. In your mercy, Lord, hear our prayers. Because we do know, we do know that you hear our prayers, Lord. And Lord, we, we know that you answer them even in better ways that we could have asked. We just thank you for your love and your care of us, Lord. And just uh, help us to continue uh, to make decisions that would share your love in the world. That would be that light that dispels the darkness. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Deep breath in. Hold for a second. Out the sigh. Another deep breath. Thank you, Lord, I can breathe in. <laughs> Thank you for that life-giving oxygen. And as we exhale, we release anything that prevents our close communion with you, Lord, and each other, Lord. Lord, I would pray that each of us would be open to that message from God, that our eyes would see, our ears would hear, our heart would receive that word you have for each of us this morning. Amen and amen. Decisions. We make them all the time, right? Some of them are pretty inconsequential. Do I? <laughs> well, I'm not sure. Do we eat pretzels? Do we eat M&Ms? Mm. But we, are, we have decisions. It's one of those things that God gave us the power and God created us. God created us so that we would automatically would worship God. And he chose not to do that. He gave each of us the power of choice. And that power of choice uh, enables us to make decisions. And sometimes you can, you'll drive to work, and I think I mentioned before that you don't even remember driving there because so much of the things we do automatically that are daily repeats every day, we may not think about them. And I love the, the thought that we have our consciousness, which is like a little dot, but then you have the subconscious, which is like this huge circle. Because there's so much that we do, we're not necessarily aware of it. Like breathing in, breathing out, our heart beating, all the things that our atomic, autonomic system does without us even thinking about it. But it's also important to think about those decisions. Some of them may be minor, but some may be major. And I, don't know, I don't know about you, but I'm one of these people that if I'm getting ready to do a decision, I'll ask everybody, what do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And in the end, I'll do exactly what I was going to do before, right? And that's, and that's true, but it's not true because I do use that feedback. Each person's input is feedback because, you know, I always believe everybody has a gift to give me if I can be open to receive it. So it is feedback, and it does, it does go into my decision-making. And, yes, sometimes it will cause me to reach to a different decision because we make the decisions based on the information we have, and maybe it's incomplete. So I always want to be open for additional information so that I can make better decisions. Now, when I had a big decision to make, I knew that the last test would be going to my father. Because <laughs> I knew if I could pass all dad's questions, I'd know I had a good. So I'd go to dad. And I said, dad, I've been thinking about this. I think this is the right choice. And dad would go, son, did you think about this? Well, son, did you think about that? How about that, son? And thank goodness, most of the time, I was able to answer all my dad's questions. And as soon as I did, I know, hey, I got it, man. This is the right decision to make. Because I do believe our decisions help create our environment. So if I make my decisions based on the principles in the Bible, if I make my decisions on loving God, loving neighbor, loving myself, if I make my decisions on, you know, turning the other cheek, over time, those decisions based on those principles of God will help create my environment. And it does make a difference. So I help to create this wonderful environment that I'm making decisions based on God. Now, does that mean everything's going to be wonderful? No. Um, we know that, you know, the cost is great. That through life, bad things happen. Since we live in a broken world because of Adam and Eve back in the very beginning when we disobeyed God. So uh, because of that, there are things that happen that will suffer. That unfortunately, people will make choices that have nothing to do with us that will impact us. And I, yes, if that meteor comes down to the earth and, and hits me, well, I guess I didn't have much to do with that. But, but I'm also kind of a recovering control person, you know, because it's, it's, it's something I think, at least I used to think. I used to think it was comfortable if I could control things, then it would make it more safe, right? Now over time I'm realizing that may not always be the case and that I just need to know God's in control. And if I do my best to make the best decision based on what God wants me to do, that's the best I can do. You know, if somebody says, well, I never changed my mind, I go, that's kind of the silliest thing I think I've ever heard, right? Because, I mean, it's like, what if I learn something new that totally changes that decision? And if I'm so dogmatic and I'm refusing to change my mind no matter what, I think I'll miss out on a lot of opportunities. So in today's scripture, we've got some four people making some huge decisions, right? Because following Jesus, there is a cost. It's not always going to be joy, there's sorrows, there's sadness, but the gain is far, far greater than the cost. And I can't even imagine going through life with the, the suffering that happens without that relationship with God, without 
that power of the Holy Spirit that we have in us. As long as we profess our faith in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Jesus says, I will send you the advocate. The Holy Spirit will be with all of you at the same time, not limited to just those 12 disciples, to help you through those difficult times. So the, the, the result, the gain is much, much greater than the cost. So we do have some <clears throat> disciples. This is a calling of Jesus' first disciples. Now you know Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, River Jordan. Then he went and was tempted by the devil. And now he comes from here and he goes to Galilee. And the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. So this is good news. Jesus came to bring us the good news, to bring in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God which is here and the kingdom of God which is hereafter. Yes, we're, we're forgiven our sins when Jesus suffered on the cross to pay those price. Each and every time we ask, we're forgiven. And because Jesus died and was resurrected, we had that gift of eternal life. But also we had the gift of that kingdom of God here and now. You know, before you've heard me talk about those God moments, when you think about what are the best moments of my life, and often it may be around some big decision you may have made, or, or maybe it was graduation from college or high school, or maybe it was getting married or a first child. But, but I've had these moments where, yes, part of it is maybe some decisions I might have made, but a lot of it is things that happen that come in that same time that had to be God. And at that moment, I real, really, this is a God moment. I feel really close. You know, you, you get little, you know, the hair kind of gets, you go, this is good. This is really good. And I believe is the more time I make decisions based on what's in the Bible, I'll have more and more of those God moments. More and more of those times of feeling in concert with God, that heaven on earth here and hereafter to be able to do that. So it is that when Jesus comes in, we just celebrate Jesus' birth and, and Christmas and just then. And as Jesus comes, he's God in breaking in our world. God says, I love you too much to leave you where you are. I'm going to send my son to be fully human, fully divine, to live on this earth, to laugh like we laugh, to cry like we cry, to experience those emotions so that I can forgive your sins and I can give you everlasting life. So it's that gift from a God who loves us so much to do this. So it is that repent, believe the good news now. Choose to believe, right? Choose to say Yes to God, to repent and believe. So this is because I choose. I believe in the good news of God's great love for me, for all of us. So there's a decision that a couple people have to make, right? It says, as Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, follow me and I'll make you fish for people. Fish are nothing. <laughs> From now on, I'll make you fishers of men. Now, it is kind of a question. So, here, Simon and Andrew, and of course, Simon is Peter, you know, Peter, the rock when I'll build this church, has a big part as we go through the New Testament. They're fishermen. Um, Jesus comes along. Now, I, I'm sure they knew of Jesus. They had heard of Jesus. They, maybe they had been present when John the Baptist baptized Jesus. So they certainly knew of Jesus. But what was it that caused them to make this huge decision to leave everything and follow Jesus? What chose them to, to be responsive? Now, obviously, I believe Jesus must have been amazingly charismatic. And we had this talk in my small group about if Jesus came up to you and said, follow me, would I follow Jesus? I hope I would, right? But if, I, if I've been too frustrated by the world, I've been too influenced by the world, too jaded by the world, that I wouldn't be able to see that within Jesus? And there, I mean, when I meet people, sometimes you meet somebody and you go, huh, and it causes you to, to pause, right? And maybe, maybe the, it's like, especially, maybe it's usually the people that I cause, it's like, wow, it's usually because they have a characteristic or a trait that I want to have or have more of. So if somebody's especially grounded, I really appreciate that. And it connects with me. And it's like, I want to be as grounded as this person. Or I want to be as 
polite as this person. One of my best friends up in, uh, lived in New Jersey, he was the most polite person I ever knew in my life. And every time I was with him, it just kind of re-taught <coughs> me the importance of politeness. So that we have this gift to give that I can receive to do that. So I want to be open. So if Jesus came out hope and pray, I would be open to that possibility. Because they left their job. Now, we're, we find out later that Simon has a mother-in-law. That means Simon has a wife. So it's not just Simon. It's Simon, his wife. We don't know if he had kids or not. There's things we don't know. So he's leaving his family. He's leaving his way to make a living, to put food on the table, to follow Jesus. And it seems like it was almost instantaneously, immediately, they left their nets and followed Jesus. Immediately. Now, as I kind of referenced, I take a lot of time to make decisions sometimes. <laughs> Maybe too long. If the building's on fire, we don't have to worry about it. We're just running, okay? We're not, we're, we're not going to get information. We're going to head out the door, right? But it's, it's, if it's an important decision, I want to get as much information I can to make the best decision I can. So what is it about these people that they saw this in Jesus and immediately left their livelihood and followed Jesus? You know, could I do that? Could I be able to do that? So Jesus calls us into a new identity, becoming fishers for people. Instead of catching fish, you're going to catch people. I'm sure they were going, what is he talking about? But at some point it must have resonated, otherwise they wouldn't have chose to follow Jesus. So it, becoming a faithful Christian disciple takes a moment of both choosing, you know, justifying grace to make a decision to believe, and that sanctifying grace, that lifelong process of living into it. Because this began that three-year journey with Jesus, seeing Jesus do these miracles, seeing Jesus do these healings, seeing Jesus suffer and die on the cross. And again, it wasn't until after Jesus was raised from the dead and in the resurrection appearances that they began to start to put the pieces together. And it really wasn't until Pentecost when they finally kind of put all the pieces of the puzzle together that started with this instantaneous decision that they made on this day to follow Jesus. But they weren't the only one. Jesus continues on. <clears throat> As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw what Simon and Let me go. Da -da -da. It says, as he went a little farther, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in the boat, mending their nets. And so what happens there? The same thing. I know. I could have found a different picture, but it's nets for Dag. I was like, how many pictures of nets do you need? You know, immediately they left their nets and followed Jesus. So not only two, now we have four people that immediately made this decision to follow Jesus. And of course, we know there are more disciples even after this. They chose to follow Jesus. They chose to make a change, to make a huge life change, to do something totally different than they had done before, that they were inspired to follow Jesus to do this. They leave their way of life. They leave, in this case, <laughs> they're leaving the father in the boat. And I'm thinking... If that was my dad in the boat, I wouldn't even look back because I know the look on his face. He sees me walking the other direction. And I'm not coming back anytime soon until I could say, see, dad, I was right. <laughs> it may have taken a while. But they believed this and they chose to go and to do this. Because it is talking about the good news, that I believe in the good news of God's great love for me, for each of us, for all of us. That we make that choice. You know, God gave us the power to choose, to make those decisions, to make those choices, to turn toward God, not away from God, to build people up, not tear people down. Because I, I, need, I need church, I need worship, I need praying, I need reading God's Bible to counter the negativity in the world. Yeah, there's great stuff going out there, so often we don't hear it, right? We hear the bad stuff first, because that's what sells advertisement on the TV. And not that we don't need to know what's going on good and bad in the world. I'm not saying that. But I need to have my spiritual disciplines in line so I can counter that, be in the world but not of the world, that I can be hopefully at a place where if Jesus does come along and ask me, I'll be like, I've been waiting a long time, Lord, let's go. Yes, 
Lord, please, I'm ready to go. Let's go. But I want to, I need the, those disciplines in order to be in that place that I won't let that opportunity pass by. To be open enough and sensitive enough to around me to not let those opportunities pass by. Because I choose to turn toward God, I choose to believe in God, to believe in Jesus, to believe in the Holy Spirit. And in choosing Jesus, I am choosing to love God, to love my neighbor. So it is a sense of saying yes to God. Yes, Lord. In fact, there is a praise song. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. That's one of the praise songs. But it, it's saying yes to God. And it's not just a one-time thing we do at confirmation. It's not just a one-time thing we do at reaffirmation of our baptism. It's not a one-time thing we do at Christmas and Easter, right? It's saying yes to God every day. So the more I say yes to God, it reminds me, well, that's right, I'm a beloved child of God, of immense worth, of immense value, with all these gifts and graces that God needs to use for God's plan. I have an amazing role to play. It's important. And to not let anybody discourage me and to, let me, to tell me something otherwise, because I want to say yes to God every single day, multiple times during the day, because that helps me to stay on track. You know, the, the airplane makes a thousand changes between point A and B. Now, most of those, the computer does it, and you'd never notice it, and the pilots barely see it. But it's always making those little corrections to stay on the path. And so as I continue to say yes to God throughout the day, it helps me to stay on the path and not be diverted down to other rabbit holes that I don't need to go to that, that's not doing what God wants me to do. It's not living into God's call on my life just to say yes. Because indeed, there is a cost. You know, it's not, I'm, I'm a big fan of Joel Osteen, and I love his positive message. And it's, if you're down, you can watch the message, it's positive. But sometimes he doesn't always tell you the, the suffering that does happen. And life does bring suffering. So yes, is there a cost to being a follower, disciple? Yes, I may be asked to do something that I'm not comfortable doing, or it's out of my comfort zone. Or I may even be asked to quit my 20-year job in the corporate world and go to seminary. Ha! Been there, done that. But it, I think those 20 years, I mean, my church asked me when I was 18 to consider being a pastor. And I was very honored and I was very active in my church. And I said, I don't think God's calling me now. So I think for those 20 years, God was preparing me for that one moment when I had lunch with that Presbyterian minister. And I asked about seminary. And he said, it's where you figure out what you believe in. So it was like... It was like, oh, that's easy. I was eager and happy to say, absolutely, this is exactly what I need to do. But I don't know that it would have been that easy or clear if God hadn't prepared me those 20 years before. But it was a case of, yes, absolutely. And maybe that's what it was for these disciples. Whatever had happened in their life before, there was a basis there that when this opportunity came, they knew it was the right opportunity. Because Jesus was certainly a rabbi. Remember, 12 years old, he's in there teaching in the temple. So he was the, the best of the best of the best. That those are the students that got to audition to study with a rabbi. You didn't get, you know, you had to go audition for a chance to be one of those students. So here's Jesus, a rabbi, offering ordinary fishermen an opportunity to be a student. So in some sense, that makes sense too. It's like, wow, Jesus, the rabbi, the best of the best of the best, is inviting me? I didn't quite make that best of the best of the best as far as reading the Hebrew Bible or memorizing it. So in a sense, it was an honor for him to choose it. And I think that was part of that decision too. And on top of whatever had gone below. So I believe for that sense, it was like, yes. Immediately, they left their nets and followed Jesus. So that's what I'm a challenge I leave with us, that you would say yes to God each and every day and multiple times during the day just to say, yes, Lord. Yes, yes, Lord. Amen and amen. I'll invite you to join with me in the great Thanksgiving and as we bless the elements for Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And it is right and good 
and a joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all their company of heaven, we join your praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, his death, and his resurrection, you gave birth to your church and delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night before Jesus gave himself up for us, he was celebrating the Passover feast with his disciples. And in the midst of that Passover feast, he, he took a piece of bread that was on the table and he thanked God for the bread and then he, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took a cup of wine that was on the table and he gave thanks to God for the fruit of the vine. And then he gave it to his disciples said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance, in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. And pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. On these gifts of bread and wine, make them be for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Holy Spirit, make us one with Jesus Christ, one with each other, and one our ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, our honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. In a moment, I'll ask you to come down as the Spirit so moves you, and uh, both sides can come at the same time. And I'll place a piece of bread in your uh, cupped hands and invite you to pick up one of the cups of juice. And we do have gluten-free for those who would desire that. And know that God's table is open to all who would choose to receive. All are welcome at God's table. Please come.
Let me invite you to stand as you're able and join our closing hymn, Jesus Calls Us, number 398. We'll be offering financial peace next Sunday, so uh, we'll invite you to watch a brief video about financial peace. Had personal loans, student loans. I was living paycheck to paycheck. We were just doing what was normal. We worked too hard to be this broke. This is a wealth building plan. It's not just a get out of debt plan. Stuff you should have been taught in high school, but we weren't. I feel like I can do more things than I ever could. You just got to get started. Okay, you just have to get started. <laughs> uh, my name is Bob Howard. I'm the lay leader here at Bay Lake United Methodist Church. And Financial Peace starts next Sunday. It's a virtual class uh, at 3.30. It's a nine-week course. If you ever wanted to take a course in financial planning, budgeting, this is the course to take. It's uh, Dave, based on Dave Ramsey, and it's led by myself and Alan Cheeks. We look forward to that. I also wanted to announce that uh, many of us have been praying for a long time for a director of children and youth ministry here at Bay Lake. I'm happy to announce today that James Owen... Uh, who was, sits over here at this side, uh, it was James Bennett, excuse me, uh, who sits over here on this side with the beard and his little son Owen, uh, has been appointed as our new director of children and youth uh, ministry, family ministries here at Bay Lake and MS Church. So we're very happy about that. So if you see James, give him a, a pat on the back. Also, Pastor Clark said for us to say yes to God. So we want to say yes to God. But also James is going to be asking some of you to help with our children and youth. So please say yes to James. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Say yes to God, in the name of God the Father, Jesus, and Holy Spirit, and all God's people say, Amen.